Hello and welcome back. In this video, I'll explain the concept of budget constraint. As we saw in previous videos, several factors influence the quantity of a given good or service demanded by a single household. We're having first the price of the product. And we know that the law of demand states that there is a negative relationship between the price and quantity demand. Also, with having other factors, such as the income, the household accumulated wealth, the price of other products available to the household, such as the complementary and substitute products, also the household tastes and preferences, and the household expectation about the future. In fact, a budget constraint is the limits imposed on household choices by income, wealth, and product prices. Now, in order to illustrate the concept of budget constraint, we consider Sam is having a budget or an income of $500. And he can make two choices. So we're having an assumption that he can make two choices between going to the cinema, and each time he goes to the cinema, he pays $10, or assisting to a rock concert where he has to pay $20 for every time he goes to the rock concert. So the budget constraint line, it will have this form. So now we will explain how the line is constructed. The general equation of a budget constraint line, it's Px times x plus Py times y equal i. Px, it's the price of x, and x, it's the quantity consumed of x. The same for y, equal the income. So in our case here, the budget constraint line, it's 10c, 10, it's the $10, and c, it's the times that Sam goes to the cinema, plus 20, which is the $20, and r, it's the quantity demanded or consumed, it means the tickets to the rock concert, equal 500, which is the income. And Sam, he has to make the choice how much to consume or how much to go to the cinema, how many times to go to the cinema and how many times to go to the rock concert. So here we're having this blue line, the budget constraint. Now, in order to better understand this line, and what does it mean? We're having several points. Let's consider the first point, which is point A. On point A, we're having 50 times or 50 tickets to go to the cinema and five tickets to go to the rock concert. So if we consider the budget for Sam, it's 500. So if he goes 50 times to the cinema, it's 50 times 10, it's 500. So he won't be able to go to the rock concert. So this point A, it's not achievable given the budget for Sam. So this is why it's, it goes beyond the budget constraint. Now also we're having another point, point B. At point B, Sam can achieve this combination between going to the cinema or to the rock concert. So he goes 40 times to the cinema. So 40 times 10, it's 400. And five times 20, it's 100. So the total, it's 400 plus 100, it's 500. So this is why it's achievable given the budget for Sam. Now, if we consider point C, at point C, Sam, he goes 20 times to the cinema and five times to assist to the rock concert. So 20 times 10, it's 200. And five times 20, it's 100. So the total is 300. So here, Sam, he can make uh, this set of choices and he will save also 500 minus 300, it means $200. So this is why the triangle the blue triangle that we're having in front of us, it represents the choice set 
or opportunity set. It's the set of options that is defined and limited by a budget constraint. Within the constraints imposed by limited income and fixed prices, households are free to choose what they will and will not buy. As long as households face a limited budget, the real cost of any good or service is the value of the other goods and services that could have been purchased with the same amount of money. Here, in order to simplify, we're having only two goods or two services, but in reality, we're having too many options. Now we will consider if we're having any change in price of one of these products or goods, what will happen to the budget constraint? So if we imagine that the price to go to the concert decreased from 20 to 12.5. So logically, Sam, he can go more to the concert because he can buy more tickets to go to this concert. Now the price decreased. So as you can see, the red line represents the new budget constraint. I invite you to write down the equation for this new budget constraint and I'll make it available in the description of this video. Like this, you can test your knowledge. Now, if the price increases from $20 to $50, given the same budget, which is $500, also we will see a change in the budget constraint. And here, Sam, he will be able to buy less tickets to go to the rock concert. So we're having this new black line. As you can see, we're having a fixed point for, this point, uh, for these lines and for this new budget constraint. Why? Because the price for cinema ticket didn't change. And this is why you can see a rotation of the line. Now, if we are considering that we're having a change, not in the price, however, in the budget. So if we see an increase in budget from $500 to $600. What will happen here, we will have a shift in the budget constraint line. And now Sam, he can buy more goods and services and more cinema tickets and more rock concert tickets. Uh, it means the quantity that he can consume, it's higher at any point. And this is why we're having this shift in the budget constraint line. Also, I invite you to think about the new budget constraint line equation. Also, I'll make it available in the description of this video. In, the fu in future videos, we will see how we can use the budget constraint with utilities. And like this, to know at what point and what combination of products any individual can take. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel.